What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hey, Chief. Doing good. How are you? Well, Happy New Year to you, first off. Happy New Year. I know. I know. It's, I hadn't seen you in, since last year. It's been year. a while. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> since last year. Good one. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely glad to be back, man. This is our first Chief Chat episode of 2021. And uh, so our next guest is definitely going to get our show off to a great start. She's a, a ball of energy uh, that that is just what we need here, Chief Chat, to get mm -hmm. our mind, body, and spirit ready for this year. So uh, without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Absolutely. We are thrilled to have our guest with us today. She is a world-renowned fitness expert, a USA track and field team All-American, and has held world rankings in the 100-meter dash. She believes in training the mind as well as the body and has motivated millions of people around the world. She is with us today to inspire our wellness goals as we kick off 2021. Please help me welcome Angela Davis. Hey. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Such an honor and a privilege. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Happy New Year. Thanks. And just a real quick housekeeping. So for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We would love to hear about your 2021 wellness resolutions and goals. So you can leave those questions and comments for Angela in the comments section. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should. We have Chief Chats every Tuesday and Thursday and great guests are lined up. Oh man, so Angela, happy new year to you. And uh, thank you for, for being on Chief Chat. Thank you for having me. Seriously, like a huge, huge privilege. Super awesome. excited to be here. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we're super excited to have you with us today. So can you tell us uh, where you're joining us from today and how you've been faring during this pandemic. I am in sunny Los Angeles, California, um, and grateful to be here, grateful for the good weather. And I am, you know what? I am healthy and, and good. Uh, we have, you know, my husband and I have two kids. And so I had to find a, a small corner in the house where there's not homeschool going on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, life is life is different. Life is completely different. But going into this pandemic, you know, our, my husband and I sat down with our kids and we said, you know what, we have an opportunity to exit this pandemic, a better version of ourselves. We, we have an opportunity here. So let's let's take advantage of the opportunity. Let's really take advantage of this time that we have together, this time in, in, in being family. And so I feel like it's it's been an interesting piece of work that was completely unexpected. But what I believe without a shadow of a doubt is every single one of us has been entrusted with this pandemic, actually. We've been entrusted with this opportunity to grow from it and change from it and learn from it and come out of it different and come out of it better. And so that's really been our focus is to just love harder and um, you know to work together as a family differently and to come out on the other side better. Yeah, I think during this pandemic, we just really uh, was, before the pandemic, we were all go, 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 career, career, this, that, and the third. And, and uh, this, this really gave us some opportunity mm -hmm. to slow down, to that's really true. slow down and really uh, understand ourselves and understand who we live with on a regular basis that we probably didn't know as well as we thought we did. And, That's right. and it's just, it's just a bunch of goodness that could have come from slowing down a little bit. That's right. That's right. So that is what we have done. And I appreciate that. I appreciate like the, it was almost like, you know, it was the stop, you know, the go, 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 go routine, you know, for my kids, it was school and after school and all their activities. I have athletes and, you know, to think that we got to spend this kind of time together. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. we'd have never had this kind of time like this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much that has been so horrible and horrific that has gone on behind this pandemic. Um, 
but we just had to fight to look for the silver linings. We really did. And that was what kept us sane. We had to fight to look for those silver linings. Absolutely. Terrific. Yes. And Angela, health and fitness have always been a part of your life. You were born into the lifestyle as your dad is a former MLB player and manager, Jerry Manuel, if I could talk. Um, How did starting early with wellness affect you and help you along your journey? I mean, my dad, yeah, my dad was drafted out of high school. You know, he, uh, he played professional baseball all of my life as a kid. And so we, we felt a lot like uh, military families in the sense that we went from city to city, depending on who my dad was playing for. We traveled all Mm -hmm. over the place. And so we were a really close knit family. We were a really tight family. Um, And he, you know, he really just was the one that implemented that work ethic and really he was the one that explained to me and showed me through his coaching because after he played professional baseball, he went on to manage in the major leagues, but he ended up, he was the one who showed me that, that marriage between, um, you know, sport and spirituality. And for him as a, a professional athlete and a professional manager and a professional coach, he would always tell me, he would, he would say, Angela, you know, and he was someone that was coaching hall of fame athletes, you know, hall of fame, you know, all-star athletes. And he would say to me, you know, it is equally as important to make sure that the man is as great as the athlete, to make sure that the father is as great as the athlete, the husband is as great as the athlete. And so he was the Mm -hmm. one that, that showed me you know, as I began to coach, I I could reflect back on who he was, you know, he won manager of the year in 2000, when he was managing the Chicago White Sox, he was an incredible baseball mind, an incredible baseball manager, but he showed me how to take sport and make it applicable to to life. And really a lot of the way that I coach now um, is because of watching him and studying him uh, as a coach. But, you know, it was a treat. It was a life lesson to, you know, to be his daughter and to travel all over and to go to different baseball parks. And, you know, my brothers loved it in the sense that, you know, they got to go in early with my dad to the field and shag the balls, um, you know, Mm -hmm. from pee and sit in the dugout during the game. But it was a treat. And, and And I feel blessed that I was able to take so much from it. Um, that I actually apply to who I am today. Well, that's, I'm glad you you touched on that because uh, the the apple doesn't fall that far from the tree apparently uh, in the family because uh, you were in fact yourself an Olympic uh, trial semifinalist and you know, one of the world's top 25 uh, 100 meter runners. Uh, yeah. So you you definitely took the, your dad's athletic prowess and and, and it definitely. Uh, was was given you got some good genes let's just put it that way you got you got some real good genes thank you and my mom likes to think she contributed she was uh she, she was a cheerleader I said okay mom you had some too <laughs> absolutely um, my mom and dad were high school sweethearts and um they were actually married at uh May- Mather Air Force Base so uh, you know That's my awesome. My mom likes to pick on us because we do, we try and throw it all back to dad. And she's like, uh-uh, I had something to do with that. I was like, all right, mom. Yeah, mama, you get some love too. You, you got some good genes as well. So uh, <laughs> so how, how, was, how, was, how was being an athlete, how has that affected how you, because you mentioned about uh, taking the, uh, the, the, the stuff that you learned as an athlete and applying it to life. Can you give us some examples of that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think really it's for all of us to, to take all of our lessons that we've learned and to, to, to use them in life. I don't feel like any of us, no matter what, um, you know, what our background is, there's nothing that we go through in vain just to go through. You know, there's, there's, there's not necessarily things that are just happening to us in our life but they're happening for us in our life. And so if we can, you know, extract the lessons constantly, instead of, you know, looking at, uh, you know, looking at the obstacles and identifying them as obstacles, shifting that perspective and looking at them as opportunity. 
So I think it's just this, this shift in perspective and taking all that we've gone through or all that we've, you know, experienced in our life and bringing it to the table right now. And so for me, that was being an athlete. For me, that was having a, a dad that was drafted out of high school and played pro ball my entire childhood. Uh, for me, it was watching, you know, my dad become, you know, transition into becoming uh, an athlete and to becoming, you know, one of the greatest coaches uh, ever. And, you know, what I love about the word coach or, you know, the definition of coach for me being in the fitness industry, a lot of people like to say, oh, you're a trainer or you're a fitness instructor. No, I'm a coach. You know, a coach is someone that can reach in and grab your greatness and say, here it is, you know, and you have coaches in your life that are not just athletic coaches, but you have coaches in your life in all areas of your life. And so for me, my athleticism and me being an athlete is all that I bring to the table right now as a coach. You know, I was an Olympic trials semifinalist, but I didn't make the Olympic team. I was hundreds of a second away from making the Olympic team. And that was devastating. That was, that was, that was a blow that took me a minute to, to wrap my head around that if I would have actually run the same race that I ran in my prelim in my semifinal, I'd have made the Olympic team. Gotcha. I'd have made the Olympic team. And so processing that, processing that disappointment, processing working that hard for something and just missing it and not leaving it at the disappointment, but going back to what I said, what did, what did I learn from that? What was my takeaway from that? And how did that change me on the inside? How did that change the molecules on the inside of me? There's things that we, that we go through, there's challenges that we go through, and it's only through the challenge that we become who we are to become. It was only because of the disappointment of not making the Olympics that I feel like I can stand in front of people today and stand on stages today and speak the way that I speak because of some challenges that I've gone through in my life and because of some disappointments that I've gone through in my life. I wouldn't be able to tap into that. I wouldn't be able to speak to that kind of heartache and that kind of heartbreak. And that's just one small you know, thing. There's been a lot of heartache and heartbreak in my life and things that I've had to go through, but I'm grateful for it. I can look back at it now and say, it changed me. I can look back at it now and say, it made me better. I can look back at it now and say, what can I take from that? You know, that, that'll allow me to breathe life into someone else. You know, that's what inspiration is. Inspiration is, is you breathing life. And I can't be someone that inspires people for a living, you know, if there's nothing on the inside of me to breathe out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so it's just taking, it's just taking the lessons, taking the lessons and being grateful for them. Yep. You gotta, you gotta have your cup full before you can pour into others. So like I said, you, you're just dropping a, a, so much knowledge and so many jewels on us right now. We should definitely appreciate it. Ah, oh, my pleasure. I love it. Yes. And through all of that, you've now built a su su successful career, becoming a fitness expert and inspiring others to be healthy. You've trained Hollywood A-listers and even were part of Oprah's 2020 vision tour last year. So what are you doing now? Um, what can you share with our audience about what you're working on? Well, we opened up, uh, Army, uh, A-A-R-M-Y. We have two locations. We have a location in New York. We have a location in Los Angeles. And uh, we just launched our digital app uh, this past September. And so we are training people all over the world through our digital app. And really what Army mm -hmm. is, is, you know, we call ourselves a group of soldiers fighting for and with each other for your best life. You know, so we use mm -hmm. fitness as the vehicle. Fitness is the vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, change your mind, change your body, change your life, change your mind about who you think you are so you can change your body and get strong enough in your body so you can change your life and live the life that you were created to live. 
you know, for me and, and, and our founders, we look at, we look at fitness different. We look at physicality different, you know, it's about being strong enough in your body to live the life that you were created and intended to live. You know, so it's really about shifting that perspective off of, oh, I just want to, you know, have a six pack or, oh, I want my glutes tighter. or Oh, I want my biceps bigger. It's like, no, 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 no. Let's train to get strong enough in our body to live the life that we were called, created and intended to live. Let's train to get strong enough in our body to make a contribution to this world. Let's be contributors. Let's not only be those that consume, but let's contribute. And how can we contribute? Let's get strong enough in our body to give back. You know, let's take the gifts and talents that have been given to us and use that to serve our world, to serve our community, to serve humanity, to push humanity forward. So it's just a shift and it's using physicality as that vehicle to get us to a completely different mindset about being here on this earth and, and, and being, you know, impactful con, you know, contributors. And I feel like doing some burpees right now. Let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get it in here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> burpees. No. All right. Go cheap. You first. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, th- I think I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait till after the podcast. I don't think nobody wants to see me struggle <laughs> on burpees uh, do- on a live broadcast. <laughs> so um, speaking of the army and uh, it- it's AAR. MY. Yes. Uh, I heard your duty title is the chief motivation officer. Yeah. So, so, and I can see, I can totally see why right now. Uh, but so what words of motivation do you have for our viewers who find it hard to, to like start and sustain? I think it's easy to start, but it's, it's, it's harder to sustain a, a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, going back to what I said a moment ago, I think it's about attaching it to something bigger. You know, like, I don't know, for me, even being, you know, a former professional athlete and being in the fitness industry for over 20 years, the physicality piece isn't enough for me. You know, it just, that's not enough for me to, to stay motivated is to, you know, have a bomb body, you know, to have a, you know, a banging body. That's not enough for me. And and attaching it to something bigger, attaching it to, you know, for example, we were just joking about my mom, but my mom hates working out. She literally hates working out. She married an athlete. She has, you know, I'm the oldest of four. We're all athletes. She hates, hates, hates working out. And when I talk to my mom about it, it's like, mom, no, 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 no. Let's just get strong enough in your body so that you are on this earth as long as you were intended to be on this earth. Yeah. Let's just let's just boil it down to something else. Let's just get strong enough in our body so that you're here for your children and your children's children. You know, all four of her children now have children. So it's like it's it's attaching it to something bigger. And I think that's what allows longevity is to set an intention. What is my intention behind working out? And if you can create an intention that is bigger than just your physical gains, I think you have a shot at sticking to it. You know, um, even for me, someone who is in the fitness industry, what I do, I, you know, I give out a lot of energy. So I have to figure out how to recycle that energy and, and, and make sure that I have that back in me so that I can continue to give that out. And for me, that's working out. You know, for me, that's taking time to to read and taking time to really, uh, you know, listen to good messages and really, you know, keep my spirit in a certain place so that I can do my job. And so if we just set an intention, you know, you know, my intention for for my life is I don't want to just exist. I actually want to live. You know, as a mom of two boys that are super active and as someone who has a job that is really active energetically, I have to find that pocket where my kids who are my number one, where I'm not coming home and giving them the leftovers, you know, like I have to figure out how to, how to do what I was created and intended to do as well as, as, you know, be the mom that I created and intended to be. So my intention 
behind figuring out what kind of workout regime works for me is, is, is connected to that, is connected to something bigger. So I feel like that is, is a bit of motivation and a bit of, you know, inspiration and insight that I can give people that are sitting here right now at the top of January, at the top of 2021, and they've done it before a million times where they've, you know, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to lose weight, or I'm going to attach your intention and your goal to something bigger than a physical gain. And I think if you can really make an authentic connection there, that you have an opportunity to hold on to that and sustain that, you know, and that'll, that'll keep you in a different way. That'll motivate you in a different way. Does that make sense? Oh man, great advice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And so continuing right on with that, you know, with the new year comes new goals. Many of us, you know, make the annual resolution to lose weight or eat better, different things like that. And then a lot of times we quickly, quickly just slip right back into our old ways. Um, so what's some advice for staying on track and achieving those goals this year? And then can you share what your new year's resolutions might be? I love that. Um, I think mm-hmm. it's taking it, I think it's taking it day by day. I think it's taking it day by day. I think it's deciding if it, once you've set an intention, you know, and I, and I love that saying about intention, when you're clear about your intention, the atmosphere has no other option, but to rise up and meet you where you're at. So I think once you have an intention, like this is what I'm going after, this is what I'm doing. That's a direction. You know, your, your intention is very directional, right? So I think once you have that, then it's, then it's instead of making this grand, you know, I'm going to, you know, this grand goal, uh, I, I think it's taking it down to day by day. I think it's saying, I'm going to put something on it every day. I'm going to put something on it every day. So for me, you ask me, what is, what is mine? Mine is not just existing, but living. Mine is not only being great at what I do, but being a great mom and a great wife. Mine is, you know, not giving my athletes all that I have. And at the end of the day, giving my family, who's most important, my leftovers. And so for me, it is figuring out how to recycle the energy that I give. For me, it is putting something on it every day. It's, it's working out. It is also being mindful of what I put in my mouth, you know, it's, it's, it's important. The, the fuel that I put in my mouth, uh, what I eat so that I can go out and do what I do. And then it's important what I listen to and what I watch and what I read, what I consume, um, that allows me to continue to be great at what I do, but also, um, you know, rejuvenates me as, as a human being and inspires me as a, as a human being. So it's really, you know, those three pillars are the pillars that are, uh, you know, that I'm very intentional about and that, you know, I just put something on it every day. I put something on it every day. You know, I may wake up in the morning and the first thing I need is a, I need to hear, you know, a motivating or inspiring message. And so for me, the first thing I do when I wake up is I say, thank you. I don't look at my phone. I don't check emails. I don't do anything like that. I just take a moment and say, thank you. And immediately get in gratitude for the fact that I even woke up today to see another day. That's a, that's out the gate. Just say, thank you. Begin to anchor my day in gratitude and then really check in to identify what it is that I need. I I like to use the example of the Waze app living in Los Angeles. I'm obsessed with the Waze app and pandemic. I was driving all the time. Um, I would put the address in the Waze app and the address, you know, and then the Waze app would give me the most efficient way to get from where I was to where I'm going. And I take, I look at that time that I spend in the morning of starting off with gratitude, starting off with thank you and, and really setting, you know, creating the space to basically 
put in the address for the end of my day, I feel like is comparable to putting it into the Waze app and it, and it gets me there. You know, it's like if we, if we wake up in the morning and we grab our phone and we're on our phone and then all of a sudden we're off, all of a sudden the day has started. You know, we haven't even anchored our day into anything. And so for me, it's like, let me just anchor the day. Let me anchor the day in gratitude. Let me just take a moment to maybe get a more efficient way to get to the end of the day. Maybe get a fresh idea and a fresh perspective and a fresh understanding, or maybe take a moment and realize I really need to be focusing on this instead of that. So, um, you know, being intentional, starting off a, your day with gratitude and deciding I'm gonna put something on it every day. And that may look different than physicality. It may look different than actually doing burpees and sit-ups and you know punching. It may look like I'm gonna take a minute of self-care and that is also contributing to me getting to my goals and my intention. Oh yeah. So you kind of remind me of myself a little bit and in, in, in the sense of um, I normally come to work and I'm bubbly and I'm, I'm always joking and having a, you know, and so for you, you come in, you're motivating, you're high spirit. And so, but when, when you're not that way, people can tell like automatically, like it's so noticeable because they're so used to you being on 10 and you come in on eight and even eight is still high, but they, they used to seeing you on 10. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You, you're going to say something. No, I'm going to say, I absolutely like, literally, it's so funny because all of my, all of my clients and athletes, they like, they want to hang out with me because they think I'm like this all the time. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's not that way. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So I was just going to ask you, because, you know, being in the military, we, we, we speak on resiliency all the time Yeah, and, 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 and trying to you know, get over time that aren't, aren't as great. Or, you know, when you're, when you're going through tough times, but you're still looked at to lead other, other people or, or, or run a section or do whatever the case may be. And so how, how do you, how do you, how do you tap into to that? Or how do you recharge? Well, I mean, I, get, I you kind of already kind of explained how you recharge. It's just, um, cause people can tell when I'm off and, and if I was quiet all the time, people couldn't really tell that I was off because I, that's just, but, but me being on 10 most of the time. And then mm -hmm. when I come in on eight, people are like, Hey, you, you all right. You got anything going on. So you got any advice for that or. I mean, for me, you know, everybody's different and everyone has their go-to for me. I'm a, I'm a highly spiritual person. And so I will enter a situation, maybe feeling low energy or not feeling, um, you know, on 10 and I I'll you know say a prayer like this is big and I'm little and I need you you know like yeah. I I really just try and I I I I think here's the thing I think we're human absolutely so we're not always going to be on 10 and we have to give each other grace for when the other person isn't on 10. We have to give each other grace. We have no idea what, what brings individuals into a moment. We have no idea the phone call they just got. We have no idea the email they just got. We have no idea what's going on with their life or with their family. So I think we need to be um, more gracious as humans and, and, and extending grace. And, um, and I think you know, striving for perfection and striving to be on 10 always is, is unrealistic. But I think if we can just choose to show up and say, I'm going to, I'm going to show up and be the best that I am in this moment, whatever that looks like, if that's eight, if that's 10, if that's four, if that's six, but what I will commit to is showing up. Yep. What I will commit to, regardless of where I'm at on my energetic scale, what I'm going through, what I am going to do, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what number I'm at, I will commit when I am called to show up, I'm going to show up. And I think our willingness and our vulnerability as human beings to show up 
regardless, regardless, is, is that opportunity to be a mirror of possibilities? Is that opportunity for people to be inspired and encouraged by your life and your legacy and who you are? And the fact that you are mostly on 10, but you're not on 10 today, but you're still there. Absolutely. But you still showed up. You still chose to put something on it. You still chose to take what you've been given and give it back to the world. You still chose to be of service. You still chose to do the work. That's inspiring. That's encouraging. That's motivating. That can be that in itself is someone's mere possibility saying, well, shoot, if chief can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, Leah can do it. I can do it. You know, and we have that opportunity every single day. We don't have to be on 10. We don't have to be on 10, but every single one of us was created in purpose, on purpose, for a purpose. Every single person, every single person. We weren't created to find purpose. We were created with purpose, okay? And so when we choose to show up, regardless of how we feel, we're choosing to walk in purpose. We're choosing to answer the call. We're choosing to say yes. We're choosing to stay on the front line. We're choosing to take what we've been given and give it back to the world. We're choosing to take that light that sometimes feels like a spotlight and turn it into a flashlight to show other people the way, you know? So I think that's what keeps me encouraged is the fact that even if I'm not on 10, I'm gonna show up. Yeah. I'm gonna put something on it. I'm gonna put something on it because maybe in my vulnerability and maybe in the fact that I wasn't on 10 gave somebody else permission to show up just the way they are. Absolutely. Man, chief motivation officer uh, right here. She's telling <laughs> y'all, give y'all nuggets. I'm talking about drop the microphone. What, is, what are we mm. doing? Right? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. What are you talking about? <laughs> we can do our life. We can do hard things. Let's go. Let's do it. Come on. I, I saw Diddy, he had a, he has like an old thing where he's like, I can do anything. I'm a savage. He starts shaking. He starts throwing the phone. He's like, give me something to do because mm -hmm. I can do it. So right? I'm feeling and like Diddy right now. And he comes and takes class and he just, he gets everyone hype. And he, and that's the thing. It's like, we, we look at, we look at these individuals that maybe we don't know personally and we see these great successes but these individuals, when no one is looking, are doing the work. You know, yeah. did he showing up to a cycle class? You know, he, 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 he's not as, maybe he's not as great at, at cycle as he is, you know, as a lyricist or, you know, as an artist or as a creative or as a director, but he's going to do the work regardless of what the work is. He's gonna show up and put something on it. He's a perfect example of that. Absolutely. For sure. Angela, we have service members and military families watching from all over the world. What words of hope and encouragement can you offer them as we enter this new year? Uh, I would just say, you know, again, a, a little bit of what I've already been saying is that every single one of us is created in purpose, on purpose, for a purpose. We have been chosen to be on this earth at this time. This is one of the most extraordinary moments in human history. And every single one of us that are here, we've actually been chosen to be here. We've been entrusted with all of these challenges. We've been entrusted uh, with, you know, everything going on, the civil, you know, uprising, the social injustices, the, everything that's been going on, a pandemic, we've been entrusted with this and all of these challenges to do right by it, to do something different with it. To, to, to take this experience and to grow from it and learn from it and push humanity forward. And so I would encourage everybody in 2021 to really be intentional and to, um, and to really create space to be impactful and to be contributors. Let's all be contributors. Let's, let's contribute something. You know, when it's all said and done and, and, and they talk about our life when we're no longer on this earth, what is our legacy? Who were we? What did we do? You know, did we, did we take the gifts and talents and did we give them back? 
And um, that's what I encourage everyone to do in, in 2021 is to not be victims of, of what we've gone through, but to choose to be victorious, to choose to, to, to be winners. You know, um, we like to say the definition of win is what's important now, you know, really focusing on what is important now. If we can focus on the things that are important right now, we can come out on the other side of this as winners. We can come out on the other side of this victorious and every single one of us have that opportunity to do that. Let's win. We can mm. win. All, all we do is win. All we do. <laughs> That's all, that's all we do. <laughs> so, but you you got this huge, like, incredible, powerful spirit, and so and so, and you obviously you want to make the world a better place and, and uplift others. Um, was there a point in your life where that switched? Because I know I grew up, I was probably young and a little selfish and wasn't thinking about the rest of the world, and then I had kids, and then I, I joined the military. I deployed saw some things that you can't unsee there. And I really started looking at life, life a little bit different in, in, in the, to making the world a better place. Did you have like an aha moment or were you was always just motivating and, and pushing others to do better? No, I, I mean, I, I think I was a bit of an encourager like my entire life. You know, I, I mm -hmm. felt like I was that person that was, you know, a cheerleader for other people's life. I, I feel like that is, part of my natural giftings and who I am. Um, but there were definitely moments in my life and really low lows in my life where um, that I had to fight out of and really hold on to my purpose as an encourager. You know, I, I love to think of an encourager as someone who takes the courage out of them and put it puts it in someone else. Okay. You know, you can't be an encourager if you don't have courage yourself. Absolutely. And so um I know that there were times in my life where I didn't think my life was worth living, where I just, you know, was so hurt by life and so disappointed by life that I didn't want to go on and I didn't want to live. And so I know that I've had to make it out of really, really dark times in my life and be reminded of my purpose and be reminded that I am, regardless of my failures, regardless of the things that I've gone through in my life, that I am yet and still worthy of my best life. And there were times where I had to really, really fight for that. And once I understood it completely and it became mine and I took ownership of that, it was that that fueled me to want everyone to feel that way yeah. and everyone to understand that. You know, the only difference between those that achieve their goals and those that don't, the ones that do feel worthy of it. So regardless of what last night looked like, what yesterday looked like, what last year looked like, you are worthy of your best life. You are worthy of your best life. There is a best life for you that was intended for you regardless of how many times you've fallen short, regardless of how many mistakes you've made. So it, it, it was, it was, some heartaches and some deep, 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 deep valleys, some dark valleys that almost took me out, if I'm keeping it real, that I had to fight out of. And once I got out of it, I wanted everyone to know that they could do the same. Like I was just, I became almost obsessed with that. Like I, I need people to know that we actually have the capacity to be great that we actually have that capacity downloaded in our DNA to be all that we were called, created and intended to be, that it's actually in us. That as we were being knitted in our mama's womb, that was being downloaded in our DNA, that actually we all have it. Every single person has it. And, and, and then what can I do to, to breathe life in that? What can I do if that's dying to resuscitate that? How do I give that CPR? What can I do to, to remind you and show you? What, what do I have to do to pull your greatness out and say, here it is. No, 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 it's yours. Go get it, go get it, go get it. And so I just became obsessed with that. And I, and I, and I truly believe, can you imagine if we all did the thing that we were created and intended to live? Can you imagine the kind of world we would live in? You know, people say they want the world to be a better place. And, and 
and we all do, but could you imagine some of the fundamental things that if we all truly understood we were created in purpose and lived in that purpose, if we all took what was been, been given to us and give it back to the world, the flow oh, yeah. that would be so different. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Well, no, we appreciate you for, for your, your inspiration and, and how you've um, impacted so many people. And so, uh, and I think you run in with that, with that purpose, man, it's, it's, it, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm getting like chill bumps over here. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. And Angela, you, you've given us all some, you know, some great nuggets here. Just wanted to, you know, let you know, we have members of military community watching from all over the world and we've enjoyed this time, but before we say goodbye, where can our viewers go to learn more about you and then follow you online? So you guys can go to, uh, my Instagram page. If you guys have Instagram, I am at Angela Manuel Davis, my entire name. Um, you can follow, uh, Army, A A R M Y, and you can join our community. You can join our live workouts. You can, you know, join, you know, download our app uh, and train with us and let us love on you, let us encourage you. You know, I do something where I do Motivation Mondays. Uh, we have tons of workouts that we download every week. We do, you know, cycle workouts. We do boot camp workouts, stretch workouts, and even my cycle workouts. Uh, we have people that just listen to them and go on a run on the treadmill, or go on a hike, or go on a walk. But they just want the inspiration. They just want to be motivated. They just want to hear the good music and do whatever workout it is that they want to do. But just know that that community is there. So. Um, you know, and literally we consider ourselves soldiers that are fighting for and with each other for our best life, you know, just constantly looking for that opportunity to breathe life into each other and to hold each other to a higher standard. So, um, you can find me on army or you can find me on my personal Instagram, uh, page. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, even though we didn't have a physical workout, I feel like we had a spiritual and mental workout because uh I, that's more important that, that that's it Just keep pouring you pouring a lot in the chief over here so i appreciate that yeah so uh but it was a true honor to have you with us today angela um this means so much to our airmen soldiers um the space force is now called guardian so for this is our first time saying it on air uh but uh the space force personnel has changed to the, the guardians so uh, the airmen soldiers guardians sailors marines and Coast Guard members, uh, cool. we, we really appreciate you and what you do uh, for the world because you you, uh, you impact a lot of people. Um, and I appreciate all of you and what you do for the world. Just know that what you are doing for the world is everything. You are everything. You are everything. You are our reason. You are our why. You allow us to be, you hold the space, you do all the things. And so I am so grateful for all of you and all that you do and the sacrifices that you make and, and you fighting for us and our best life and our best world and our best country and, and, and all that you do. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I, I come from a from a lineage and, and, you know, I got my grandfather, both of my grandfather's blood, you know, running through my veins and both of them, you know, were, were servicemen and, and they, and they stood and they fought. And I believe that I am who I am because I come from them. You know, I am a, I'm a soldier in my own right and what I do because that blood goes through my veins because of who they are and because of who they've, you know, and, and what they've imparted to me. So just know what you are doing and how you are imparting and, and what you are imparting into the people around you and the impact that you make and, and the mirror of possibilities that you are and who you show us, you know, what you show us we can be. 
you know, you are the truest example of courage. You are the truest example of champion. You are the truest example of winner and the truest example of victorious. And we learn from you and we are inspired and encouraged and motivated by you. So thank all of you for what you do. We are so grateful. Absolutely. And on behalf of all the men and women in uniform, uh, we, we, we appreciate your support. And thank you so much for your encouraging words. Uh, some some life lessons to live by. And um, man, it, it was just, it was a great chat. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. Thank you guys. All right. Uh, well, wish you all the best and a happy new year. If you don't mind hanging on after the live, I got to get some information from you. Okay. Happy new year, guys. All right. Bye.